Hello everybody, this is George with Melnix Automotive. Today I'll show you how to change transmission fluid and filter on a 2004 Mercedes E-Class. It's an E500. This procedure is going to work on E-Class, it's going to work on C-Class, also on S-Class uh, type of vehicles. Uh, I'm going to show you all the supplies that you will need and I'll show you how to, uh, how to change it. So uh, just stay tuned with us and we'll go step by step. So from supplies, these are the parts that you will need while uh, doing this job. You will need a uh, new cap and a locking pin and uh, I'll post the part number for this. Also you do need a service dipstick because these cars do not come with dipstick. See I have one right here. This is the part number, uh, Mercedes-Benz part number. You can pick this up for half of the cost if you buy it online. This is a transmission filter. Also, this is the part number for that. Also, you're gonna need ATF-134 transmission fluid, okay? I don't recommend using aftermarket, and you will need a new gasket. So this is a new gasket. I end up getting uh, seven, the whole transmission takes eight quarts, all right, if you drain the torque converter. But we're not d draining torque converter. We just replace, replacing the filter and uh, in the pan. Um, really, Mercedes only tells you you're gonna need four quarts if you just taking the pan off and you're replacing the filter. But since the line came out of radiator, the cooling uh, cooler line came out of radiator, so the car was running, so we lost more than four quarts for sure. So I ended up getting seven quarts to be safe. Um, so what we're gonna do right now, I'm gonna show you what be the next step. First, what you want to do, you want to have a vehicle on the level surface. I have it on my uh, scissor lift, but uh, you could have it uh, anywhere in your garage on a level surface. And you want to jack up all four corners to a comfortable working um, height. Because if it's too low, you'll be underneath the car, you'll be very uncomfortable and things like that. So I'm going to lift the vehicle up and I'm going to show you the points where you could uh, put a jack underneath. Because there's four points underneath the car where you could put your jack to jack it up and uh, then we'll start draining our fluid okay as you can see I have the vehicle lifted I'm gonna go underneath and show you the points where you put the jack if you don't have a lift it's not a problem whatsoever as you could see this is a front driver side right underneath the rocker there's a square this is this square is designed to put a jack underneath so if you don't have a lift, like I said, it's not a problem whatsoever. You just could do it on the ground, but make sure you have all four corners the same height. So this would be the one lifting point. This would be the second lifting point and same thing on the other side. Now I'm going to show you the drain plug where to drain the fluid. All right. So as you can see, this right here is the drain plug and uh, it's a it's a t30 okay you will need a t30 either a screwdriver or a socket set and there's also if you if you see these these bolts on the side there's there's seven bolts uh, also they have a start it's a t30 and they go all the way around so we have one here we have second one here and if you follow me it we have a third one and also a bracket Okay, you can see there's a bracket in that. Then when we come back, there's another one here and two in the back. There's one hiding right over here. And I can't, my camera is uh, not the best quality. But what we're gonna do right now, the best way is to drain the fluid when the vehicle is nice, was nice and warm and you run it for about 10, 15 minutes. But in my case, I cannot run it that long because we had a bad o-ring and the uh, customer lost a lot of fluid on the parking lot when the o-ring came out of the radiator and uh, cooling line so that's been taken care of so there's not enough fluid we're not gonna run it what we're gonna do the car has hundred thousand miles we're gonna go ahead and loosen this up take the drain plug out and we're gonna drain it into my pan so if you don't have a pan like this you could just use any plastic pan to get that uh, to, to do that it's not a problem Next, what I'm gonna use my t30 and I'm gonna remove my drain plug You 
could see how black that oil is. Once I drain it, I'm gonna go around the transmission pan. I'm gonna remove seven of those bolts that go around the pan. We're gonna drop the pan and I'll show you what it looks like underneath. All right, next what I'll do, I'll remove all of the bolts that go around the pan. There's totally, total seven bolts. And I already broke them loose. All I gotta do is take them out. They look like this with a little bracket. I'm gonna do that all the way around the pan. Guys, as you can see, I pulled the pan down. It comes down very easily. Another tip I'm gonna give you, if you cannot remove the drain plug, you might consider, because it looks like a fiberglass type of uh, oil pan, you might wanna consider removing the whole entire pan and very slowly dropping it into your, uh, into your bucket or something. So next, what we're gonna do, remove the oil filter, and as you can see, it just comes right down like this. You wanna be careful, you'll get some fluid. It's all coming out. It's got an O-ring. New filter comes with new O-ring. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let it sit in my drain bucket here, and I'm gonna show you what, looks, what the oil pan looks like inside. We'll just let everything drip down as much as uh, we can. So I'm gonna show you now the oil pan. Very important not to forget, we will be replacing this rubber gasket and I'll attach all the part numbers for this vehicle but very very important thing you see this magnet here look how much how much it's got worn metal on it and basically it's just dirt it's a magnet so this magnet comes out and we do have to clean this magnet look look how much we have a lot of metal shavings on it so we're gonna clean that up really nicely and I'm gonna just show you how much metal this hasn't been serviced in a hundred thousand miles and the reason it's being serviced now because he had uh, one of the cooling lines come out of the transmission so it would be not wise not to do the service so I'm gonna show you what the next steps in just a few seconds but what I'm gonna do right now I'm gonna go ahead and clean up this pan I'm gonna clean up this magnet and uh, we'll reinstall it and I'll show you where to put the fluid in and how much and how to check the level in a hundred thousand miles and the reason it's being serviced now because he had uh, one of the cooling lines come out of the transmission so it would be not wise not to do this service so I'm gonna show you what the next steps in just a few seconds but what I'm gonna do right now I'm gonna go ahead and clean up this pan I'm gonna clean up this magnet and uh, we'll reinstall it and I'll show you where to put the fluid in and how much and how to check the level. All right, as you can see, I cleaned my pan real nice inside. I also went ahead and cleaned the magnet real nice. So I'm gonna stick the magnet back where it belongs. Okay, so it's nice. It's sitting there in a good position. It's nice and clean. Uh, also, the what I wanna mention regarding a drain plug uh, the, uh, the drain plug sometimes doesn't want to come out for nothing. So this pan has got almost like a fiberglass type of a shell, but inside it's metal. Um, and sometimes this rusts into uh, the threads and doesn't want to come out stripped. So it would be a good idea to just take the whole entire pan off um, without even bothering with the drain plug. So what I'm going to do, replace the gasket next, and it pulls right off just like this. Okay, very easy. We're going to go ahead and put a new one on. We're gonna use a little bit of a brake cleaner. All right, so I pulled the old gasket off. I'm gonna wipe the edge of the pan with a towel because there's a little bit of transmission fluid on here. Just like this, nice and clean. 
What I'll do, I'll spray a little bit of brake cleaner. on my napkin and I'll also degrease it so we have a good clean pan. Next I'm gonna grab a new gasket. Like I said it's not expensive. I do recommend replacing it. You could get away without replacing it but then you're doing all this job you're buying expensive fluid. It's not worth not changing it and then having issues but just like that you can see that really went on nice and easy nice and uh, flush it's not sticking out and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, install it on the car just opened new filter as you can see it's got a new o-ring on here what I'm gonna do I'm gonna install the filter and it's pretty easy you'll hear a click when you push it in you'll hear a click just like that it's in place next I'm gonna take a towel and I'm gonna wipe I'm gonna wipe all this off and clean it up so it's nice and clean degrease it and uh, we'll be ready to put our new oil pan on as you can see I clean it real nice, there's no oil on it, I degreased it. Next I'm going to grab my pan and I'm going to fit my pan. Okay, so what I did, I just put the pan back on and uh, I got all the bolts uh, going except they're not tight. What you want to do, you want to start from the middle and go on a criss-cross pattern, um, working yourself from the middle to outsides from both sides of the pan. So I'm going to demonstrate that in a second. Starting from the middle, like I said, you want to get that nice and tight. And I do have specifications on my website, melnixauto.com. It's a... Uh, Just like that crisscross. And then you just want to go in a clockwise pattern after that just to make sure. We're not missing. So we didn't miss any of these bolts, so. All right, it's all set and done. I'm gonna take the rag, I'm gonna wipe it down. I'm gonna lower the car and uh, I'll show you where to fill the transmission fluid. All right, as you can see, I have this cap. It's a uh, transmission fill uh, dipstick uh, hole, but there's no dipstick. You can see the red clip and I do have a brand new one right here in my hand. And I'm gonna explain you how that works. You take a piece of pliers or a needle nose, you twist off this red cap right here. You twist it off, as, as I already did that. You could see that it's twisted off. I just couldn't uh, videotape myself because it's really tight area to do that. And I'm trying to do it with one hand and, uh, and uh, videotape myself with my other hand. So I apologize for the quality. Well, at least you get an idea how it's done. And then once you twist it off, what you wanna do, you wanna take and I'm going to explain it on my other clip. You're going to take and push through this red piece. You're going to push it right through, push it down. Once you push it all the way through, you're going to stick your screwdriver in the hole and that will allow you to remove the cap. So I'm going to demo, I'm going to show you so you get an idea how that works. This is the cap right here in my hand. All right. So I'm going to twist this off as you could you could see it's made to be broken off. Once you twist this off, this red um, red piece will come right through and it's gonna fall out and I'll see if I can get a good picture here and then there's on the inside there's a little tooth basically it's made for the screwdriver on the top that hole is made for the screwdriver to go in so that's what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna remove it I'm gonna put my funnel and you want to use a funnel like this so 
it fits right into that hole. So let's get going. Another thing, don't forget to remove your old O-ring from your cap. Because when you remove, this is my new cap. This is my old cap. As you can see, there is no O-ring on the inside. There should be an O-ring because when you buy a new one, it comes with a new O-ring. Don't forget to remove it from inside a dipstick because you will never be able to install this correctly. So I got it removed. Now I'm going to put my funnel in there and I'm going to start dumping fluid. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put four quarts right away. Then I'll start the car and I'm going to let, it, let the car get up to the temperature and I'm going to check with my service dipstick. I got my uh, funnel installed, it's got the flex hose and look at the difference in fluid. This is what I'm putting in and you guys seen what I took out. It was a black fluid, almost looked like uh, it was a gunk. But uh, we're going to put four right now and then I'm going to get the car up to temperature and I'll show you how to check the fluid. Then what you do, you want to start the car. And let the car run for about five minutes or so. And you want to go ahead and cycle it through all the gears. For, you know, put it in reverse, leave it for about five seconds. In neutral, then drive. Then neutral, reverse, park, and I like to do that a couple times just so all the transmission fluid gets moved around the transmission. It's gonna get pumped into the tor torque, and the transmission that's in the torque gonna get pumped out. It's just gonna cycle, and you could also go through gears. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna cycle it just like this, just a couple times, two or three times. And now I'm gonna let the car run till it reaches its normal operating temperature. Normally I think it's around 80 Celsius or so. And then uh, I'll show you how to check the fluid level. All right, there's a couple ways you could uh, check transmission fluid level. Uh, but once you get the car up to the temperature and you cycle your gears back and forth, um, one way you could use infrared thermometer um, to check the, tr the transmission uh, how hot it is also you could take a look at your dash it's not going to be as accurate but it, you could see that we're running about 86 85 80 maybe 2 celsius so i'm going to post the link this is an optional if you want to pick one of these up you could use it pretty much for anything not only just checking how hot is your transmission um, but but this is pretty awesome tool it's inexpensive i think you could probably get it as low as 30 bucks and I'll post the link in the description. I'm going to lift the vehicle up and I'm going to take a measurement of uh, oil, uh, transmission um, ATF pan. I'm going to take three or four measurements. I'm going to show you where. And uh, if we're reading approximately 80, 82 to 86 Celsius, we're golden. It would be perfect time to put a dipstick in and check what's the level. Let's lift the car and look underneath. Mm -hmm. See, my tool right now is set to uh, Fahrenheit, and you could change it to Celsius. So we're gonna go underneath the car. We're gonna. I'm gonna try to videotape myself, and this is an oil pen. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna take a couple measurements. So at 31.2 Celsius. All right. We wanna take a couple corners. It's 31.3 Celsius. 32.2 30.7 and one more in the middle so as you can see we're at 31.6 and it's it's gonna climb um, so basically what I'm gonna do I'm gonna wait till it gets to about 80 Celsius and uh, I'm gonna stick my dipstick and I'm gonna show you what the dipstick shows Okay, this is the tip of the dipstick, and I'm gonna see if I can get a better view. But you can see there's, uh, let me see if I can get a good picture here. But basically, it's very small print. Where my nail is, right here, this is 80 Celsius right here. You wanna be between those lines right there. 
we want to be between those lines when the car reaches approximately 80 Celsius. So we're going to wait another couple minutes for the car to run. And once we get up there, it'll be perfect time to check the fluid. Alright guys, so now I think it's a perfect time to check. See it's 80.1 Celsius and you can take a couple measurements, 79.9. That's absolutely perfect time to check transmission fluid. I'm going to lower the vehicle and I'm going to put the service dipstick and I want to make sure the fluid's going to be somewhere between where it's marked for 80 Celsius. It's going to be on top of the dipstick. Okay, so this is my dipstick. I supposed to be around 80 Celsius. Anywhere in this area should be pretty good where my nail is. So this dipstick is not going to go all the way in the bottom. It's too long, but you will feel it. You will feel it when it stops. There you go. Like right now, it won't go anymore. And I still have another two feet sticking out, as you can see. So I'm going to pull it out. And as you can see, I am right in that area. So it's perfect. What I'm going to do right now, I'm going to cap it off and they'll do it. So that's it for this video. This was George with Melnix Automotive. If you have any questions, shoot me an email. Otherwise, thanks for watching. So all I have to do now after checking my transmission level, I got to put new cap on and a new lock and I'm gonna in put the cap on first and then the lock the lock goes right into the hole like this so I'll show you when it's done in a car it should look something like this when you're done so as you can see I have my red lock in place new cap it's not going anywhere now the car is ready to be driven this was George with Melnix Automotive if you have any questions shoot me an email Otherwise, thanks for watching.